Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Omni with TGN and GG. And this time, what I'm going to do is a Photoshop tutorial, I guess. Um, sorry, I've been AFK for a while. Really, it's just that real life kind of got crazy for a while. I had a lot of things I had to deal with. But now I'm back. I'm starting making some videos. I apologize that the first one is not a video game video, per se. But it is creating a video game interface for anybody interested and that wants to learn. What I'm going to be doing is creating the UI for Heroes of the Storm. So let's get going quick so that I do not go over time. I'm going to play some music here because I'm sorry if that's distracting for you, but I like cannot work on graphics without some music. So hopefully that's not too loud for you. <clears throat> All right. So I have already started a little bit, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it all over again so that you guys can see what to do okay and i've already chopped up the ui a little bit so that i uh can kind of work on separate elements let me see where is the actual play button there we go ready button okay so that's what i'm going to do first is work on this ready button so let's start doing this and i always work with smart guides on so if you don't have that on it is view uh snap actually i think is what it is i haven't switched it in so long but yeah i think that is what it is and that is very helpful for lining things up and just knowing where you're at so is this the right image let me see if this reference image is right okay shrink this down a little bit control t i guess i'll just put it over here i don't really need it right now but i might need it later so here we go So first thing we're going to make is this ready button. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just leave these layers off for now. So let's create a new layer. And let's see here. So I'm going to start building this with... <coughs> I, just, I usually use just default gray. It doesn't really matter. But we're going to use the square tool or the shape tool. And we're going to be using a square, a rectangle rather. So grab that. Make sure you're on your new layer. Drag a square out. And, you know, there's usually like a thousand ways to do this, but I, uh, I'm just going to show you the way I do it. So you might see another way to do it, and that's fine as long as you achieve the same, you know, end result. So I'm just going to line this up. Control T again was how I got these bounding boxes to start, start moving it. Um, now, if you hold control, you'll see your, your mouse goes like to this little white cursor when you hold it over one of the vertexes. So what we're going to do here is just drag it up to match in this corner. And try to go along exactly with it. Just make it better in the end. So... Uh, that looks pretty good right there. I'm going to do the same for this side. Right up into that corner. There we go. Just make sure the bottom line didn't become uneven. Now I'm sure the top line is uneven. So that's one thing we're going to have to fix real quick. And I th think that's even right there. I don't Yeah, that looks even. Okay, so that's basically the bottom, and then what we're going to do here is just click Apply. And if you hold Alt, so make sure you select it on it, hold Alt and just drag it off like this. Um, well, actually, you know what? Let's see if this works. And then go to Edit, Transform, Path, uh, Flip, Vertical. Um, and then just put it up, align it like that. If you take the opacity, put it down so you can see... I mean, this is kind of a cheap way to do this, but we're going to do it just for time's sake instead of building another top one. Um, so what I did there, let me go back. Right now it's a shape tool and you can't erase it. And that's what we're going to do. So what I do is just press E to go to my eraser and then try to click on it and erase it. It's going to tell you it needs to be rasterized. Just say OK. All right. Now I'm going to get the bounding box. Press M to get your selection marquee. And then I'm just going to chop off this top. I think it was right there. 
Yeah, press the Lee. Control D is to get rid of your bounding box. I'm gonna put this back up to 100%. Okay, and then I'm gonna move it, align it to where it's just right with it. Not 97, but 100. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's select this shape. So now I'm on the first rectangle. We need to merge them. So let me see if we're actually close enough. That's... I'll show you what we're going to do for that. Alright, so... Take these two layers. Your shape layers. Right click on them once you have them both selected. And then merge layers. Now you have it all on one layer. All right, now you can kind of see that line still going through it. So I'm going to control click on the layer to grab it all. Um, go to my brush, press B, and mine is massive right now. So I'm going to scale it down. Hold Alt, and that's how you reference a color or select a color. So I got that, and I'm just going to fill in that line. And control D to get rid of the bounding box. Okay, so now you basically got like the first inner shape going. Um... Now we're gonna create the second one. So we're just gonna put that to the side, grab the, make a new layer, grab the shape tool again. And we're basically gonna do the exact same thing. So try to get it right, the exact right height. That'll make it easier for editing later. Pull this down to make sure it's exact. And then the top one, make sure it goes right to halfway point right out to the edge and right out to the edge and right, that should be good all right we're just gonna do the same thing we did hold control click the vert click and hold to drag it we're gonna line this up as best we can pretty good right there do the same on this side and pretty good right there make sure the bottom stayed straight looks like it did all right so we're going to apply that and I think we're just going to do the same strategy for this one as well. So hold Alt, drag it up, Control T. I mean, the first time we flipped uh, vertical, but this is another way to do it. Just Control T and spin it all the way around. All right. Now line that up as best you can. Then we're going to not Control T, but we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to erase the top. So go ahead and get your eraser, pressing E. Try to erase it. It'll say that. You say OK. Now back to the marquee box. We are going, well, hold on. First, you're going to have to change the opacity so you know where to erase. There you go. Go back to the marquee tool. Drag it out and delete what you don't need. Go back to 100%. Select both layers. And how I'm doing that, if you hold control, you can select a layer. Hold control and click it. You can select it. So I got one and then I hold shift and controls to add another selection. And now I have them both. And right click, merge layers. Good to go. Now we have both kind of basic elements to this. Of course, they're the same color. So what I'm going to do to fix that real quick is just do a color overlay. It doesn't really matter what color it is right now. So I'm just sure I'll do some type of red. I'm going to put this dragon on top layer. And it's aligned pretty well, actually. That was pretty perfect. So let's take, which one is it? Um... And let's not be lazy here. Let's name our layers. So this is the back. I'm just going to say back shape. And this is the front shape. Oops. It's the front shape. Right? Yeah, okay. So now I'm going to take the back and the front, kind of move them off to the side, see if I like what's going on so far. It's looking pretty close. Let me see something real quick. Is this... It almost just looks like I've got too big of a... Sp not enough space here. I guess it's right. Optical illusion. All right, close enough. Let's see what time we're at real quick here. 
25. What time did I start it? I have no idea. Well, crap. Let's just get as much done as possible. Alright, so we got a pretty good start. Now we got to decide what to work on. I'm going to work on this back piece first. Um, at least get it a little bit closer. So what we're going to be doing is changing these background and foreground colors to uh, try to match this back piece with how this back piece looks, the surrounding edge. So how we're going to do that, we're going to select the foreground color, and then once you're on this, it'll give you the ability to reference another color. So basically we're going to try to get the top and bottom colors. Uh, this fairly represents the bottom. Now we're going to get the background color, and this kind of fairly represents the top color. So those two colors are what we're going to use to make our uh, gradient. So we're still on the back shape. Double click the layer to get into the effects panel. Uh, we're going to do a gradient overlay. Click the colors to change it. Now it gives you the option of what your foreground and background colors are. So we're going to use those. All right, so let's see how that looks. It's not that close yet, but it's work. We have another couple effects to go to achieve the exact look of what they're doing here. So that's not bad. Let's go into this real quick one more time. Change the opacity. Um, you know, I'm just going to go down a tiny bit with the opacity. Leave it about right there. That looks fairly okay. All right, now let's start working on this top one. It's obviously completely the wrong color. Um, so it's got a color overlay. The easiest way to do this here, without me going into deep explanation, is let's just switch the color overlay color. See, once you have a color overlay, a lot of the other effects don't work. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to say that's about the right color. Because what we did, we went into the color overlay, clicked it. Now we're in this screen. It gives us the reference little eyedropper. I clicked what I think is kind of a representative of this piece and its color without the effects. You know, just its default color. <clears throat> that's close enough okay so like i said now we can't do other effects because there's a uh, color overlay on it so i'm just going to add a layer so i just added this layer select them both and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to merge these layers so it basically just created me a new layer that's de that's default that color i can do effects on top of it so yeah we're good to go now okay so now i'm gonna have to start deciding um kind of what they're doing with this piece uh let's see here for one, you can tell there's definitely a bevel and emboss, so I'm going to double click this layer, go into um, bevel and emboss, then I'm going to switch off global, or use global lighting, this effect right here, or option right here, and I'm going to switch these angles to 70 and 70, so it's almost a dead on, but slightly above, and that looks like the exact <laughs> setting they may have used. So let's mess with the size a little bit actually it doesn't look like we needed to mess with the size uh softness a tiny bit make it a tiny bit softer to kind of match what they've got going on there um i know they've got another highlight right here but i think that may be done using um well let's see let's switch this to right here see if we can get it to i guess you can kind of get it to work with this there we go that's closer. So just mess with that. For me, it came out to be a 90-69. Um, and I think that's close enough for tutorial purposes. But that is how you're going to adjust like where the reflection shows is with this little dial deal right here. Um, and the little tick mark represents where the light is coming from. So there you go. And if you use global lighting, anytime you do any other effect, it's going to come from the same angle. So right now, I'm not sure if I want that to happen. So I'm going to leave that unchecked. So that looks pretty good. The dark, you can change the opacities of the lights and the darks, but okay, we're pretty good for now, at least with that bevel and boss. So we're going to leave that. Now, can I tell what else is happening in here? Um, well, they've definitely got some type of color effect going on right here. That could be done just using a brush with a Gaussian blur. I think that's what I might do. Uh, but for right now, I haven't really decided what that is or if that uh, effect should be on this layer or at the end done as a whole. So I'm not going to do anything for that right now. What I do know they're doing, obviously, is some type of honeycomb pattern. So I already have, well, I think I already have this saved on my desktop. Yeah. So I just searched Google for a honeycomb pattern 
and here's one right here brought it into Photoshop we're gonna shrink it down and I don't know if, if you guys know this or not but if you hold shift just shift it uh, scales it from one uh, location one central location it's using to scale it from well not central but it's off to the side in this case this bottom corner and so if I do it from this other side same effect so you see what I'm saying if you want it to uh, shrink evenly like from the middle then you hold alt and shift and you use your shrink or you use your you know you adjust it and it will do it from the middle vertice instead of picking one of the corners anyways so now what I'm trying to do is I'm gonna match the scale of this honeycomb up with what they were doing so that looks close I'm gonna drop the opacity down so I can actually see that's low enough Let's move it over the top of these honeycomb and see if it starts matching. It is pretty dang close. Let's see what happens when we... That's too small, obviously. That's still too small, it looks like. So that almost looks like the exact right scale. It's close enough. That is pretty close. All right, so we're going to switch this back to 100. And we're going to drag off a couple... So that, let's, one more over, one more over. So that, we're covering the whole thing. Boom, and one more over here. Boom. Okay, so now, we're going to select all of these at once. So you can select the bottom layer, hold shift, select the top, select them all. Okay, so we got that. Now we're going to right click. Uh, you can't just merge, well, yeah, you can, because these aren't shape layers. Sorry, just merge layers. Alright, so now we have that all on one layer. So what we're going to need to do is get it to fit just over ours, right? Because it doesn't go on the background. It just stays on that front shape. So we've moved it over. Let's make sure that's decent. We don't want like a weird ending place for these on the bottom. Let's kind of try to do what they did. So some are big, some are small. It looks like we're doing the exact same thing. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to put that back up. And now what I'm going to do is where's my front shape? Well, now it's not called anything, but this is my front shape, I believe. So, control-click the layer. Now, you've, if you see, it gives me that bounding box around the layer I selected. That's exactly what we want. So, now we're going to select back on our, our uh, honeycomb layer. Because what we want is to delete everything that's not in this bounding box. So, right now, if you press delete, it'll just get that. Control-Z. But if you press Control-Shift-I, that inverts your selection. Now, press delete. Deletes everything that's not in that bounding box. So now we're starting to match things up a little bit. Okay, but now if you notice, I'm just kind of trying to go one detail at a time and noticing what they're doing. So if you notice, their honeycomb is like white instead of uh, black. So that's a pretty easy fix. We're on our honeycomb layer. We're going to go to um, image adjustments and invert. All right, now, we don't really need the black, and we could probably have a layer effect take care of that, but I'm just going to go ahead and delete it out. So press W for your magic wand, select the black, delete, control D, and V is how you select back to your hand. So now we're here, we're looking fairly closer, a uh, little bit closer, I should say, to what's going on here. Um, but we're not there yet, obviously, this honeycomb doesn't really look like theirs does. And if we just drop the opacity, that's not really going to do it. So it looks like what's going on here, first of all, is there's some type of glow going around it. So we're going to use an outer glow, and it looks like it's bluish. So we're going to get um, a blue, a real light, like electric blue type of color. That looks good. And we're going to do this little outer glow. <clears throat> it looks like it's not very much, so let's see. Maybe increase the size a tiny bit. I did mine at 5. I say OK. Oh, and by the way, this document size is 1920 by 1080. Um, just because that is what most HD screens are. Um, anyways, that's starting to look pretty good. What else can we do to make it look more like it, though? Because it obviously doesn't, doesn't look the same yet. So if we drop the opacity down as a whole, that doesn't work. Because see how they have like this bright brighter section coming through? So, I don't know. Like I said, there's lots of ways to do things, but how I'm going to do this is I'm just going to get my eraser, put the opacity at, like, mm, I don't know, sure, 50%, and then put the hardness all the way down. Size is pretty good. And I'm just going to start erasing, basically, to make it look like that. So, I put the hardness and opacity down. That's key. We don't want a hard, hard, a hard erase line or a 
we don't want to erase it all. So here, let's just start doing this now. Click and hold down because you're going to need to do this evenly or it's going to look choppy. So it looks like it all kind of gets uh, its opacity reduced up until this point. It kind of stays brighter above where I'm at and then it kind of goes like this. So I erase all that with one. I'm still holding down. Now I'm going to let go and I'm going to kind of do the same process um, until it looks closer to this. Just make sure you're not clicking a bunch or else it's going to become uneven. No, I'm going to get kind of quiet now and try to make it look like supposed to All right, so that looks uh, closer at least. Um, I don't want to get too picky because I'm probably running out of time. So that looks pretty close. I'm going to kind of leave it right there as far as the erasing goes. Then I'm going to go back into this layer and kind of think for a second. Um, this outer glow almost needs to be like more or let's see here. So about right there, but it needs to be like brighter. So we're going to switch it from a screen. And we're going to try some other layer styles, maybe linear dodge or like, ooh, linear light, that looks, that's pretty good. Yeah, we're, we're going to try some linear light, sure. And then it looks like their lines are a little blurred, but I think that's just because of... Uh, resolution issues so I'm not going to do anything about that so that looks pretty good this is probably should be like a darker yeah more like that okay we're, we're somewhere okay now I really kind of want to go in and like follow this exact line you know what I mean and make sure that that's what I would do if I were trying to make it like perfect but I don't have enough time to do that, guys. So, I don't. I already don't know how long this video is, but uh, we're gonna keep going. Uh, so this back now, I just keep jumping around, trying to like match how things look. Wait, okay. So here, go back to this front piece. It looks like this reflection. See the reflection that we're trying to mimic that goes right up there. Well, I don't like ours that much. It's like not the right color. So how are we gonna fix that? We're gonna select this color, and instead of white, we're gonna do like. It's kind of like a baby bluish, so maybe if we did like something like that. And, you know, once again, I would sit here and be meticulous, but we just simply do not have the time. Maybe soften it a bit more? No, less. Like right there is pretty good. Size. It's pretty good. I want to adjust this a little more, but it, uh, maybe not. Okay, we're close enough. That looks pretty dang close. As I go adjusting it. Oh, I should have just freaking left it. What was it? It was 90... 69. That's close enough. Or something. Sure, now I'm messing it all up. I just feel like this... Needs to be different okay close enough all right so then another thing i see is that their lines don't continue through that effect so their honeycomb effect doesn't continue through so i'm going to name this honeycomb so i stop forgetting what i'm looking at and then i'm going to kind of delete like up to where this effect is i should be in a little closer so i can make it exact so Oops. Let's get it. Let's get it exact. Uh, about right there. So that should be gone. 
And that is more like theirs. Uh, I'm still not happy with that effect. That uh, reflection. Maybe it needs to be a little more white. Uh, that's close enough. Um, okay, now what else can we start doing? So let's get... Okay, so there's some light going on up through here, like I said. Now, I'm thinking of one way to do this. What I'm going to do... This may not work out, guys. Sorry, I'm kind of like winging this as we go i'm gonna add another layer right here take out my brush i'm gonna get a like mm, mm. well first to make sure i don't lose these colors off my palette i'm gonna put a color palette down so there and there i can use those as references create a new layer uh, rename this colors okay now i'm going to go to this new layer and what am I doing? Oh yeah, I'm gonna use this, go to brush. Now we're gonna select a, whatever this color is, you know, this bluish color. So maybe just some light blue, but kind of electric light blue, something like this. We're gonna take and we're gonna, hardness is already, well, it's all the way up. So we're gonna put hardness all the way down and we're just gonna try something here. We're gonna try, yeah, we're gonna try yeah, that's way too blue. So not so light blue, more dark blue like that. We're going to just basically trace along here. And then change this layer style. And see if we can get something. That's kind of close, to be honest. Or, or you know, we're going to change a little more, but. Ooh, that's not bad either. But the bat, it's terrible on the back. Ooh, that's... Oh. Uh, that's not bad. That's not terrible. Alright, that actually looks kind of good. But you can still see, um, you know, like my paint mark line. So what we're going to do to fix that, we're still on the layer. I'll ball it off. You can see we're going to go to filter, uh, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're just going to switch it to zero so we can see what it's at default. We're just going to increase it until it looks like less drawn on. Like right there looks pretty good. We're going to say okay. And we're starting to look like something. So let's take uh, just for fun. Well, yeah. Let's go text, or oops, press T, type ready, if I could type. Now move it up in the middle. You know, of course, we'd like to find a font that actually looks close to it, but I'm not going to do that right now. Let's see if there's a bold. There's a bold in this, so we'll just do a bold. That's actually pretty damn close, but it's not perfect. Now all they've got on it is a drop shadow. And they have it like right underneath it. So the distance is going to be low. So we're like a two maybe. And then it looks like they kept the size pretty much on default. So that's all we're going to do. Okay. All right. So ready. Um, so what else do they have going on here? I may have gotten rid of the honeycomb a little too much. And if you ever think you did get rid of it a little too much, what you could always do is just, oops, that's not the layer, honeycomb. You could always just like duplicate it, see, so it shows out a little more. Um, not gonna. Well, maybe I am gonna do that actually. I'm gonna leave it on there, and then I'm gonna take the eraser again, and I'm gonna kind of just um, erase anything that's not like the middle of where it's supposed to be, like real bright on theirs. You know what I'm saying? All right, so there we go. I mean, that's pretty close. Okay, so what else is going on here? It looks like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go back to the front shape, which I think I renamed mine already, and I'm lost in my layers. Uh, 
yeah, layer nine. Here we go. So go into the effects, double click the layer, go into the effects panel. Um, if we do like, let's let's try a few things. Let's try this inner glow, and we're gonna go with this blue color that we had picked earlier. Um, let's see here what that's doing. I mean, it looks pretty cool, but it looks like that's not quite what they have going on. Especially on the bottom, it's dark. It's not. It's not light. So. What if we, let me, let me see here, I'm trying to think if we could get this on like half the layer. Mm. Well, looks like we're not going to be doing an inner glow because that's going to take up the bottom part where it's supposed to be like black. I'm trying to think if I could cover that with anything else in the end. And I think I could actually. So, I think I could. Here, we're gonna. But if you're ever gonna do something where you don't know if it's gonna work, well, first of all, you should uh, save. But what I like to do, so I don't have to like mess around too much, I just duplicate the layer. I'm just making sure I don't mess up. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna duplicate all the layers that uh, I've got so far that are working for me. So like all these, which would make up this. Plus the little uh, color layer. There we go. All this, I'm going to hold Alt and drag out. And I'm going to... Eyeball off, I guess. Uh, well, first I'm going to move them to the very bottom. And I'm going to eyeball them all off. So that I know I've got another fresh start in case I mess up. Mess something up. Alright, so... I think I might be able to do this here. Let's do a inner, excuse me, an inner glow with that blue color. Okay. Size a little bit bigger. Really what I'm trying to do is like pull off this top part a little more. Because uh, it has a lot more effect going on than we currently do. So I'm wondering if I do this. Okay, I just want to check something. Okay. And then I'm going to create... A new layer right here and i'm going to merge the front shape layer with the new layer i just made so it's one thing and then i'm going to try to do um i'm going to switch this to black because the bottom is more black so i'm going to double click effects gradient overlay but i'm going to change the color to just black and come up from the bottom so now i'm using that old inner glow that we just made on it and i'm changing the bottom to be more like this one where it's like darker you know so Okay, scale, um, maybe like that, um, opacity, it's not that dark, but we do, see this is the tricky part, we have to make it like dark enough to cover up that inner glow, but we can't make it too dark, so, I mean right there is looking pretty good, um, scale, maybe a little bit much, but we don't want to make it look like a hard break. So we kind of have to make it a lot. Um, maybe if this wasn't pure black, but a darker blue, it might work out a little bit better. So we're going to say cancel. We're going to go back into this foreground color and make it like a real dark blue like that. Um, go back in here. Gradient overlay. Switch the color to be that dark, dark blue. And I don't know if I like that. I don't like that, so let's just make it like almost black, like pretty much black. Gradient overlay, color, black. Okay. And I mean, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty dope. But it's too dark, so we need to go a little bit less. Damn, that bottom part is just hard to cover up. Um, that doesn't look bad though, right there, to be honest. So, we might just go with that for time's sake once again. Okay, so there's that. That actually worked the way we wanted it to, but now the thing is the, that a honeycomb is baked in, so we can't get back to that layer. That's why I created extras down here, just in case I didn't like the process in which I made it. Um, but I don't think we're going to need to get back into that honeycomb layer, to be honest. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, we could have done some more adjusting to make it more look more exact, but once again, for time's sake, we're just going to leave it. All right.
so we're looking pretty damn close. Um, can we... Oh, wait, I didn't even bake the honeycomb in. I thought I did. I did not. That's good. So we still have that layer. Um, let's see what happens. We're going to go back into the front shape layer effects panel. What if we do an outer glow? I mean, I'm just trying to get crazier now than it is. So I probably shouldn't do this. But it looks like there is a, a slight something. So yellow is not a bad color to use on top of white. This light yellow because it, it stands out and kind of looks almost white even. So... I don't know, sometimes it's a helpful color to use as a glow. That's why it's defaulted to it. Um, but obviously that's too bright. You don't see that in theirs. But if you just do a little bit here, kind of gives it that standoff, stand out a little bit. And they have that a little bit in the edge right there and on this edge. So we're going to put the opacity all the way down to like 20 so you can barely see it. But it still gives that little bit of lift, uh, breaks the two pieces apart. So now you can see they have a glow going around there, going around up here. And that might be, remember when I did like, uh, got out the brush and then colored that on? I kind of have that too going on, so that's why I did that. Because you can see it's not just like an outer glow, it's only on the top. Um, anyways, that looks pretty dang close. I know it's not exact, but like, yeah, that's pretty close. Pretty close. Okay, so let's... I don't know how much time we're at, but I'm having a feeling that I've gone pretty far in time. I might be nearing 15 minutes now, so I think I'm going to make that the end of uh, video one. But I will continue with this interface. I'll probably make like uh, this thing right here, and I guess one of these, and maybe I'll make this stuff up here as well. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. It's been fun, and I will see you in the next episode. All right, later. If I can figure out how to stop recording.